It's part of the myth making. But okay, it's too early in the year to get involved with this right now. Let me ask you some technical questions the minute I come back about the news. Here's a great caller, though. Brian on KLIF in uh, Dallas, my brand new affiliate. And no more KLIF uh, callers for now. I'm glad you're listening and found me. Go ahead, please, Brian. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Quick question for you. With the everyday battle of what today is America, how do you keep your energy and your focus? How do you, what do you do to keep fighting? It's a very interesting question. And I ask myself, where does it come from every day? Because most men half my age have given up already. Never mind my age. You know that for a fact. Most people say, you know what, the heck with the world. Let it go where it's going to go. I can't change things. Let me just have a good time and let someone else worry about it. And that's the basic attitude of human beings. I get it. I don't have a direct answer for you. I mean, I have a couple of different answers. I think I've been gifted with a phenomenal amount of energy that I never knew. I always knew I was energetic, but I didn't know I was this energetic. You know, it comes down to the finish line, where you are at the finish line, not at the start. A lot of people start out hot and they, 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 they just, you know, die out along the way. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just luck. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I also believe that uh, we're supposed to leave the world a better place than we find it. I was taught that by liberal professors when I was young and in college. I used to hear that liberal uh, adage. Try to leave the world a better place than you found it. Well, how can you leave the world a better place than you found it when you have a man who is so intent upon destroying everything decent in this country? And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Why would he flood America with illegal aliens? Does that help even black people? Let's focus on that for a minute. How does flooding America with illegal aliens help the poorest of the poor, whether they be black or white? It does not. So you have to see that we have very powerful interests at work here that transcend race and time back in a minute on the savage nation join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7287 let's get down to brass tacks it's 2016 and the presidential race is the number one issue for talk radio from now right through the election in november the average person will still listen to music and sports right until the election. That's if they even want to care about it. That's if they even vote. But we're going to talk about it. I'm not going to do it three hours a day because it's, it's boring. How much can you say? Donald Trump ran his first political ad today, which is worth playing, by the way. We're going to play it in a minute. It's really worth hearing because he's doubling down on all his positions. And we're expecting Mr. Trump on the show sometime this week or very soon. I, I don't pressure them. He'll be on when he'll be on. You know, you're not going to demand and get anything out of a relationship. If he wants to come on the show, he's welcome anytime. He knows I support him because he knows that his ideas and my ideas are very similar. It's that simple. So let me continue to take some calls uh, on the Savage. You know, I had a topic I was going to cover, which is do you spank your child? For an interesting side note, because the highest court in Massachusetts which, of course, all courts are high in Massachusetts all the time. As you well know, they're all high all the time, and given that the legal profession are filled with ex-stoners. But the highest of the high people in courts in Massachusetts has ruled that the state child welfare agency acted legally when it denied a couple's application to become foster parents. Why? Because they spanked their children. They used corporal punishment on their biological children in accordance with their cr Christian faith, and they said they would not spank any foster children. But a lawyer for the state said many foster children are traumatized and seeking another child spanked, seeing another child spanked in front of them could further traumatize them. So the uh, parents said the Department of Children and Families decision was arbitrary and capricious and infringes on their constitutional religious rights. So the Supreme Judicial Court's decision today said that the parents' rights are outweighed by the department's interest in protecting foster children. Well, I'd be interested to see if the high court in Massachusetts protects the rights of young Muslim children who are sexually molested in the form of 
how shall I put it in a pleasant way, one of the religious practices, which is clitorectomies. Or will the same high court say that that's a parental right because it's their religious belief? We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a call. David on KLIF in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I was going to ask you real quick. We got uh, Donald Trump stating he's going to cut the head off of ISIS. You know, we've got uh, Cruz and Rubio talking tough about what they're going to do about ISIS, which I find refreshing to have from a candidate, first of all. But with Russia in there now, basically taking up the void that we left, um, what are we going to be able to do once once they get in there? They've got a whole other year before they're actually going to be in office. And we've got Russia brokering trying to broker a peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran now. So the longer they're there and the more we're absent, I mean, what are they going to be able to do once we actually get in office? If we can get the... Uh, I think uh, you're asking a question for which the answer is kind of obvious. Why do you want to interfere with what Russia is doing since they're doing what Obama can't or won't do? In other words, don't... don't let, let's start with the issues. If, if you said... Oh, uh, Russia is is brokering a peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Isn't that a good thing? Uh, yeah. So why would we want to interfere with Russia's brokering a peace deal? We don't want war. So I, I don't quite understand what you're saying. I think what you're implying is now that America has lost its power as a broker in the Middle East and virtually everywhere else because of the imposter in the White House, Will anyone ever be able to regain it? I think that's what you're asking, isn't it? Yes. I don't know that we need to regain the power in the Middle East and elsewhere. Let Russia pick up the mantle and run with it. Let them have the headache of dealing with the maniacs in the Middle East, you know, if they can. You know, they, they got pretty badly beaten up in Afghanistan. It's what destroyed the Soviet Union. I'm not so sure that Russia, as powerful as it is, even under the strongman, Vladimir Putin is going to be able to manage the Middle East. I believe it's unmanageable. The British learned it. The Russians learned it. Uh, the Americans have learned it or are going to learn it very soon. How are you going to manage Muslims who hate each other for the last thousand years? This war between Shiites and Sunni has been going on since the 11th century. No outsider is ever going to fix that. So many people would say, what do we need to be there at all? What's the point of managing them? We don't even need their oil anymore. There was once a time that there was a strategic reason for managing the factions in the Middle East. That was oil. We have just killed the fracking industry because it was driving the price of oil down. Once it starts up again, if oil should ever go up again, uh, we don't need the Middle East oil. Eventually, they're going to be begging for income in those, in those uh, Arab potentates. You know that. So I, I don't think that it's a bad thing that Russia is in the Middle East, by the way. I think it's a good thing. Let's go to WGOW Radio on, on this topic of another topic. Uh, let's see. Your name is Bob. Bob, what's on your mind? Hey, Mike. I think that the reason why your streaming numbers are so high, maybe it's a lot of people like me who are, Now, I listen to WGOW at, at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, but I'm working, and I can't hear every word. i got to get out of the car. I miss a little bit. So I'm, I'm getting that on the device, and the next morning I'm listening to the show again, and I'm picking up all the details that I missed, all the segments that I may not have been able to hear. That's probably something that uh, attracts people to you specifically. I miss a little bit here and there, whatever. But, Mike, I'm not, I'm not going to miss anything that comes on this show because there's some gems in there. And it's important that I get the entire show, and I'll get that from 3 until it's over. And then I'll, the next, you know, the next morning when I'm going to work, I'll pick up the little pieces that I, that I may have missed. And I think that's something that's different about your show than the other shows. I think that this is a reflection of my background as a writer and as a scientist and as a teacher, which is I try to make most of the words count. They don't always all count. Sometimes I goof around. Sometimes I'll transcend the political or the serious into the ridiculous you know i like to play around on the radio as well but the fact is is that there's a lot of deep content in most of my show and i'm not doing this to compare myself and say i'm better than the others the fact is that there's a difference and i just think people go they gravitate to where they want to gravitate to and i think that the the what do you call it the podcasts give people a chance to do what you just said which is to get into the uh, into the deep weeds 
<laughs> in other words, the grass, and start listening again and say, well, what did he really mean when he said that about Russia today? Can I listen to that again? Because I just said something, I think, important about Russia. And I don't know that people caught what I said. I don't think it's a bad thing that Russia is there. I think they're doing what we, we should be doing. But Obama has lost so much credibility that Iran and Saudi Arabia would not listen to him. Neither trust him. So I don't know. We'll see if Russia can do that. Bob, where is GOW Radio? I don't mean to be obnoxious about it. What city are you in? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, I love Tennessee. Thank you so much for calling, Bob. I appreciate that. Well, you know, Government Zero had a good run, and it came out in October. It made it to number three on the New York Times list. It's still selling, by the way, because even in the election year, people want to look back and say, wait a minute, this is not old news. Page 71, Islam's 1,400-year war against the world. Maybe that would help the New York Times understand that this didn't begin with George Bush. Maybe the idiots in the media could learn a little history by reading the book. Maybe they could learn that there's a thing called the Vostok Ice Core Samples, which may help them understand that global warming, global cooling is a natural phenomenon, which is certainly not to argue for pollution. See, this is the problem. I want to go into that another time. I don't really want to get sidetracked right now. The fact is, is that there's a lot of information there, but uh, I have a new ebook coming out this week, which I'm not going to talk about to any great extent at all. It's on how to fight viral diseases, how to fight colds, how to fight the flu. It's about immigrants and epidemics, about the diseases that immigrants are bringing in, and how Obama has opened the floodgates. I have the data on it that's going to make your hair stand up. But, you know, I've talked about this for years. Remember when he flooded America with the Central American kids? Not this summer, but the summer before. And how many of them were bringing in a new strain of flu that, were, that was knocking our kids dead, killing some of them, paralyzing others. It is all in this book on immunity that's an e-book that will be out. I don't even know how to direct you to it right now because it's not for sale yet. But I'm telling you what's on the horizon. And then in May I have my Teddy book coming out. It's a, basically a picture book of me and my little dog, Ted. The 11-pound poodle who thinks he's a 110-pound Newfoundland. He has no idea how big he is, how small he is. But he finds out once in a while and he, when he tangles with the, wrong, with the wrong dog. I was at a friend's house in Los Angeles who had a 120-pound. His name was Henry. I don't know what he was. Just a big, black, furry dog that was so big. He, I mean, when you, uh, you know the type of dog that lumbers in the house? I'm used to a little guy you can pick up like a pocketbook when he disturbs you uh, and say, come on, calm down. This one you can't pick up. But it's always the same thing, like, oh, calm, he'll be okay, don't worry, he's fine, he won't hurt you. Meanwhile, I mean, he's pretty intimidating. I said, what was he bred for? He was carrying things, pulling carts in the Swiss Alps. You know, those guys with the kegs, those big dogs. Sweet dog, he did calm down eventually, to be honest with you, and he eats less than my dog. I don't understand that. I don't know how this big dog eats less than my dog does. They said one cup of kibble a day? No wonder he's running around like a lunatic. You know, give him the meat, he'd be 20 pounds heavier and probably a lot calmer. He'd be able to relax after the show like I do. But I want to play for you a little political stuff and see what you think of it. You probably heard it on other shows. Everyone has heard about it so far. But we're going to talk about it here on the show. Let's play Donald Trump's first paid political ad right now. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The politicians can pretend it's something else, but Donald Trump calls it radical Islamic terrorism. That's why he's calling for a temporary shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until we can figure out what's going on. He'll quickly cut the head off ISIS and take their oil. And he'll stop illegal immigration by building a wall on our southern border that Mexico will pay for. We will make America great again. There you go. There you go again. All of the intellectuals hate Donald Trump. Oh, they're so smart. Oh, all of the great left-wingers, they're so smart. The country's being overrun. The economy is being hollowed out. The language is being bastardized. You name it. But they're so smart, they know that Trump's an evil man. Why, he's Mussolini, maybe even Hitler. He's so bad. Why? Why? What has he done that's so bad? Well, well, he, he doesn't want Muslims to come in. Oh, he doesn't. Well, let's analyze that for a moment. And let's see what the waves of recent Muslim migrants have brought to America. Well, let's go to Europe to see the real truth. Came out today. 1,000 plus 
migrants, 